Hey everyone, this is our lesson on ecology. So first let's make sure we understand ecology versus biology as the course. So biology itself is the study of life in general. Ecology is the study of how life interacts with other lives in the environment that it lives in. So it's not just our life in particular or life as a whole for the universe. It's how our lives affect the lives of others or interact with the lives of others. And ecology is the study of how life interacts um, with everything around it. Whereas biology, again, is the study of life. Come on, there we go. All right, how are organisms grouped within the biosphere? So we look just in total, and it's actually very similar to what we just looked at in taxonomy. So you should have saw, remember a picture from taxonomy that looks similar to this. So we've got our major biosphere, which is like, you know, just the domain, it holds everything. Then that in the biosphere, we have specific biomes that we look at. From there, they break down into ecosystems, then communities, populations, and then individual organisms. So a biosphere itself is the portion of Earth that supports life from high in the atmosphere to deep down in the ocean craters. And then a biome is a large portion of the Earth that has a sp specific climate and group of organisms. So we've seen some of these terms before, the tundra, rainforest, um, desert, grasslands, savanna, uh, taiga is another one. And here's a picture of the major biomes that are in the world. Um, some of these you might see from projects that we do. Some of them I took off on the list. So we dealt with the seven major ones. An ecosystem is the population of plants and animals that interact with each other in a given area. So in that biome and with abiotic components in that area. So remember that abiotic means not living. Okay. And then um, the community, as we go further in specificity, are all the populations of different species that live in the same place at the same time. So that is uh, particular. We don't want to say something like that we live in the same place dinosaurs live. You know, they aren't, they aren't walking the earth anymore. Not all different species of dinosaurs. And then a population is a group of organisms that are specifically one species, which interbreed and live in the same place at the same time. And then an organism is an living indi a, an individual living that is made up of cells, using energy. It goes through all the characteristics of life, the rare hog. So like I'm an organism, my dog over here is an organism, individual things, not a whole group of same species. So um, these things that an organism does. So remember, this is review way back from our first unit, and that is the characteristics of life. So remember, rare hog. So reproduce, adapt, respond, energy, um, homeostasis, organization, and grow and develop. So now that we mentioned this earlier, so let's just quickly go through abiotic versus biotic. <clears throat> and every environment has both living and non-living factors that will affect how organisms survive. Um, so, you know, we talked about survival of the fittest when it came to evolution. Um, that's all based on these factors that can make or break an organism. Remember, abiotic is your non-living factor. So that's like the sun, um, the dirt, the composition, water things like that, your elements. And then we've got biotic, which are living factors, which could be, you know, the plants that are around. It could be the predators and the prey that are around, things like that. So now let's quickly go over just some terminology that you do need to know the difference between, and that's a habitat and a niche. So a habitat is the place where an organism lives its life. Whereas a niche is all of the strategies and adaptations that a species uses in its environment. So for instance, a worm, you know, lives in the soil. That's where it lives its life. But bees, um, you know, collect pollen and pollinate. They take that back and they use that to make honey. Those things are niches for their environment. A niche is considered or defined simply as the organism's job. 
So now let's get in specific, and this is a large lesson. I'm trying to go through it pretty quickly about relationships within an environment because this is important, and these are known as symbiotic relationships. So organisms living in communities with uh, many different types of other organisms, we do, you know, see tendencies for um, survivalist actions, right, in nature. So um, animals will do what they need to to survive, which could mean fighting with other species. So we have competition for all different things like space, food, shelter, and resources. And then within populations of the same species, you'll see even more um, competition for, you know, mating for reproduction. So organisms of different species sometimes do not engage in competition. And sometimes there's a relationship between organisms that permanently associates the two together. And this is what symbiosis is defined as. So organisms in symbiotic relationships are living together because their best it's their best survival method. So they actually will use each other, um, which is why it's called a relationship, to be able to survive. They somehow supply one thing for, they supply something for each other. So here's the definition of symbiosis, which is kind of broken down. And there are three different types of relationships in nature that we need to know of. The first one is mutualism, and this is where both species benefit in the relationship. So for instance, honeybees and flowers. Bees will collect the pollen. They actually will take some of that and pollinate to different plants, which will spread um, pollination for the plants. But also the bees can use that to make honey, which then is mutual for the bees as well. And then you've got um, ants on some kind of plant. I don't really know what they're doing. But that's the best example here. Um, these pictures are a little small. I'm having a hard time seeing them. But this means that this is a positive for both. So a lot of times you'll get a chart of relationships. You'll need to know what kind is present. And you would note, okay, if it's beneficial to both species, you give them both a plus sign. If it's beneficial only to one, you give that one a plus sign. If it's not beneficial to the other and it's actually negative for them, you give them a negative sign. Okay. Commensalism is another one here. So this is a relationship where one organism or species benefits and the other is neither harmed nor benefited. So it's not really useful for them, right? Um, so you would draw a plus sign for the organism benefiting and I think you just leave like a line through it. Like not, you don't write a dash. You kind of can leave it blank for that. Um, so here you see like a clownfish and a sea anemone. So the clownfish can actually use the sea anemone as protection because it's not, um, not really affected by the, the electric shock of a sea anemone, but it can live there and be protected from others. So that's a beneficial relationship, but the sea anemone doesn't really get anything from it. <clears throat> and then we have parasitism, and this is one where one organism is benefited and the other one is harmed, okay? So ticks are a big one because ticks will suck the blood out of animals or, you know, other species. They feed off of that. That's positive for them, but they can also spread disease. That's not great. Um, tapeworms, that's a pair. Anytime you've heard of a parasite, right? Because a tapeworm will eat all of the food from the individual or the species that they're in, and that species will not get the nutrients from it and actually can make them very sick. So whichever one is benefited gets the plus sign. Whichever one is harmed obviously gets the negative sign. So here's our symbols. Yeah, I don't know why these are there. Oh, there it is. So you put like just a, a dash, not a hyphen, for unaffected. So for mutualism, here, let me write this in really quick. So for mutualism, you're going to have plus and plus. Commensalism, plus and a dash. Parasitism, plus and a minus. Okay, and it really does depend on which one you see as the first or second organism for these last two. So just kind of pay attention to the relationship that's given. Now let's talk a little bit more in depth about plants. And we're going to talk about succession. 
And succession is defined as the orderly natural changes and species replacement that take place in communities of um, like plants and forests in particular. So for instance, you know, you have like raw, I call it raw ground. It's just grass. Over time, you're going to start to see other things um, growing. So here we've got, this is abandoned farmland. And then as time goes through, then you've got um, aspens and young hardwoods that are forming. Give that a couple years and those young trees will have a second growth and then you've got the mature forest that comes after that this is a really good um good thing to see happening because deforestation is a very very big problem in today's world so succession to help grow back some of these forests are very very nice and helpful so primary succession takes place on land where no living organisms exist so for instance if a volcano has erupted and the lava has completely destroyed the land, it's made it where there's no grass that can grow. There's just stone everywhere. It's barren. Um, you see the same thing when a glacier moves. <clears throat> so once growth is allowed to happen and living organisms can actually um, be sustained there, that's what's called primary succession. So the first organisms to inhabit the new land are called pioneer species. So here you can see lichens are very, very good pioneer species, which is like a kind of moss growth um, because they can help develop soil formations, which can then lead to other forms, grass, weeds, things like that. And then we have um, climax communities here, and this is when we've got a community in an area that reaches a stable status where little or no change in the species of plants and animals is occurring. That is known as a climax community because it's reached its high point. Now we've got secondary succession, and this occurs when a community is disrupted by a natural disaster or human action. So like a giant wildfire that we see out west a lot, that would cause a secondary succession because um, the forests there were already established, then they're ruined from the fire, then they start to grow again, that that's fact that they're growing again is what makes it a secondary succession. If they're growing for the first time, that's probably.